Let's consider our limit definition once more and extend it so that it includes the cases when our input numbers x or our output values f of x increase or decrease without having any bounds. So first consider the case when x, rather than approaching this finite number a along the number line, increases or decreasing, decreases exceeding any bounds. So when x has no bounds, then we speak of limits at infinity. So x approaching positive infinity or negative infinity along the number line, the x-axis. This gives us two cases to distinguish, two limits at infinity. Now to give you a concrete example of a limit at infinity, let's consider the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 2 plus 1 over x. So feel free to pause the video and think about what happens to 2 plus 1 over x as x gets greater and greater exceeding any upper bound. Okay, I hope you pause the video and realize that as x gets greater and greater, its reciprocal 1 divided by x gets closer and closer to 0. So adding those numbers to 2, we get numbers that get closer and closer to the number 2. So intuitively it makes sense that this limit at infinity equals 2. Now, as for applications of limit at limits at infinity, you may think that because it involves infinity, it cannot really be applied to real-world examples. Well, um, it's far from the truth. Uh, limits at infinity are super useful whenever we look at the long-term behavior of a certain process. So to give you some simple examples, let's consider a ball falling off a table, bouncing on the floor, uh, and with each bounce losing some of its initial energy you see that the height of the ball as a function of time has a limit at infinity that is the height of the floor. So intuitively, I hope this makes sense. Another example of a limit at infinity would be taking a hot drink and placing it in a cooler environment. Then the temperature of that liquid at some time uh, would have a limit at infinity that would be the ambient temperature, the outside temperature, as the liquid cools down with time. Now, this is when x has no bounds. What if the values of the function f of x have no bounds? Then it's this part of the definition that we are modifying. And in this case, when f of x has no bounds, then it means we are dealing with infinite limits. So f of x could tend to positive infinity or negative infinity. Again, this gives us two cases to consider. And to give you a concrete example of an infinite limit, Let's look at the limit as x approaches the finite number pi over 2. Consider the limit of the function 1 over the cosine squared of x. Now this is an infinite limit and the limit equals positive infinity. And this is because as x approaches pi over 2, the cosine of x approaches 0. Its square also approaches 0 but through positive numbers. So 1 divided by those positive numbers getting smaller and smaller uh, result in greater and greater numbers exceeding any upper bounds, hence the limit is positive infinity. As for applications of infinite limits, you may consider a, a bacterial colony in a petri dish growing at an exponential rate and maybe at a certain point in time you just cannot count them anymore and you may declare them to be infinite in, in number. Of course it never really happens, it's always finite size but uh, for all intents and purposes it might be uh, useful to call it infinite. A better example would be relativistic mass. In special relativity there is this fact that if you measure the mass of an object that moves at some speed relative to you, then you will find the mass be greater, the greater speed um, it, at which it uh, moves to you. So when the relative speed is zero, then you measure a rest mass. And as the, as the speed increases, approaches the speed of light, the relativistic mass that you measure gets greater and greater, exceeding any upper bound. So this is another example of an infinite limit. Now with the relativistic mass and the bouncing ball example, you might, may suspect that these two notions have some very nice graphical um, ways of, of um, um, seeing them. And indeed, um, I want to illustrate it using this graph. So here you see the graph of function f in red and you see how as x approaches positive infinity gets greater and greater, the values of the function seem to be getting closer and closer to the height uh, negative 1. Uh, so in this case we would say that 
the limit at infinity, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x would be negative 1. And you can see how there is this horizontal line at y equals negative 1. So this would be the horizontal asymptote, as we, as we call it. On the other hand, as x approaches 2 from either side, we see the values of the function getting greater and greater, seem, seeming to exceed any bound, any upper bound. So in this case, we are dealing with an infinite limit, and the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x would be positive infinity. And again, it shows up as, um, uh, values, as the graph of the function is getting closer and closer to a vertical line with the equation x equals 2. So this would be a vertical asymptote. Now with these examples, we are ready to state the precise definition of these two no notions. We are dealing with a limit at infinity if for every positive epsilon there is a number n such that if in the first case, if x is greater than n, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. And in the second case, if x is less than n, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Now in both cases, the basic idea is that once you fix that error, that epsilon that you allow for f of x to make around l, there will be this point, this number on the number line n, which tells you how far along the number line you have to go and beyond which point you will find axis for which f of x lands in that strip around the limit l. So in the first case you have to go to the right to exceed that point, to go beyond that point l. Uh, and um, in the second case you have to go to the left along the number line to exceed, go beyond that point n on, on the number line. As for infinite limits, the precise definitions are as follows. For every uh, number m there is a positive delta, such that if the distance between x and a is less than delta but is positive, then for the values of the function f of x we get in the third case uh, greater than m and in the fourth case less than m. Again the basic idea in both of which, both of these, is that whatever bound you would pick um, as a number m along the y-axis for your function, if x gets close enough to a along the x-axis, the number line, the, the uh, values of the function go above that bound in the third case and below that bound in the, in the last case. So it goes above an, any upper bound you would give it and below any lower bound you would give it in the fourth case. Now with these precise definitions, so the only thing that remains is combining these two notions to get infinite limits at infinity. Now depending on which of these two you pair with which of these two you get one of four possible uh, scenarios and uh, this way we get uh, four possibilities for infinite limits at infinity and what I would encourage you that you pause the video and think about how we modified the original limit definition to get limits at infinity and infinite limits and think how to mix and match the different components of these definitions to arrive at these four notions and their precise definitions. So feel free to pause the video and try and formulate these precise definitions. Okay, I hope you pause the video, but now it's time for questions. So evaluate this limit at infinity. If you think the limit does not exist, input d and e. For infinity as an answer, input inf. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have inputted zero for the limit. So for these kinds of limits where you have the ratio, the fraction of two polynomials, you have to compare the degrees, the highest powers of x in the numerator and denominator. And here you see that uh, the numerator has a degree 3 and the denominator has a degree 4. So this one will dominate the entire expression as x gets greater and greater. So it will dominate and suppress the numerator, leading to a limit 0. Next, evaluate this limit at infinity, pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have realized that in this case the limit is positive infinity. And this is because now the degree of the numerator is greater. It's of degree 5, whereas the denominator is of degree 3. So it will be this term that dominates the expression as x gets greater and greater and results in values that get also greater and greater exceeding any upper bound. Hence the limit is positive infinity. Next, Im evaluate this limit at infinity. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted 3 for the limit. Now in this case the, the degrees of the numerator and denominator match both are cubic in x, so x to the 3, 
So in, this, in these cases, it's the leading coefficients, 6 and 2, that will determine the value of the limit. And indeed, as x gets greater and greater, the values of this expression will get closer and closer to these dominating terms, uh, the values given by them. So 6x cubed divided by 2x cubed, which can be simplified to 6 over 2, that is 3, hence the limit. Is it true or false that the function f of x equals 2x divided by x cubed plus x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0? So pause the video and select your answer now. Okay, it is true. Taking um, x to approach positive infinity, for example, gives us the limit 0 because of this dominating cubic term in the, in the denominator. So uh, it will uh, indeed uh, get closer and closer to that horizontal line at y equals 0, the graph of the function that is. Next, is it true or false that the graph of the function f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0? So pause the video and select your answer now. In this case, this is false. So having a vertical asymptote would mean that if you approach 0 with, your, with x, then uh, the left-hand limit or the right-hand limit should be infinite. But in this case, the limit as x approaches 0 of this function is simply a finite number, namely the number 1. Hence, there is no vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Next, evaluate this limit at infinity. Uh, pay attention that this uh, is a difference of two functions, both of which has, have uh, positive infinity at, uh, in, uh, at infinity for a limit. So it is, a, as it is a, of an infinity minus infinity type of expression. So one has to be careful, but you have every tool ready um, to compute this limit. So feel free to pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused the video and inputted one for this limit. And indeed you can compute this, uh, infinite, this limit at infinity by using conjugates. So that basic method of taking this square rooted expression and multiplying it by a funny looking factor of 1 that's uh, made from the conjugate of the original square rooted expression which really means just flipping this previously negative sign to positive and dividing the conjugate by itself then multiplying the numerators will lead, uh, will lead to some cancellations which will simplify the expression and it will show you that the limit is 2 over 2 hence the limit is 1. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.